The big story in the NBA is that the Phoenix Suns uh, owner, Sarver, has been suspended for one year and fined $10 million, which is the maximum under the NBA uh, bylaws. Now, there was an independent investigation conducted after there was an ESPN article about his conduct uh, last year, and Sarver was found to have been... The investigation found that he had committed a lot of these acts that he was alleged of um, in that initial article, which includes repeatedly saying the N-word as a white man and saying that it was okay to do so because there were other uh, black coaches or people in his workplace vicinity who were doing that. Um, That corroborated some allegations made by uh, one of the former coaches on the Phoenix Suns, Earl Watson. And these are just instances that we know of, as we should say, Um, because there's bound to be more, but this is just what was able to be verified within the context of this report, which also talked about how... uh, how Sarver made a bunch of sexual comments in the workplace to not just female employees, but male employees. And that was male, uh, that was sexual conduct as well. Um, Sexist remarks and retaliation, like telling a pregnant employee that uh, she should stop working on one of the things that was assigned to her because the baby quote, needs their mom, not their father. Also uh, asked a a female employee whether she had gotten, quote, an upgrade uh, related to her breasts uh, and and potentially, you know, speaking about if she had her boobs done. And um, there was another instance where he was pulling down uh, his underwear or it was a uh, sarver pulled down actually i'm sorry a male employee's pants in front of co-workers at an event um there were there was con uh contact between pelvis to pelvis with other male employees where um he took off his underwear in front of them again like a lot of the language in this it's it's legalese and so it's hard to determine exactly what went down but these at the very least the characterization of these incidents, however sanitized, this happened, (laughs) this happened. And so here is, here's Adam Silver commenting on this, the commissioner of the NBA. Silver is widely considered to be the most responsive commissioner in the major four leagues between the NHL, NBA, NFL, and MLB to like the concerns of, Black players, non-white players, non-male players. Um, But you can see the limitations of even that characterization of his leadership of the league. Because the reality of being a commissioner of any professional league is that you are a servant of the people who really run run the show. And that is the collection of owners that hoard all the capital, and they are the oligarchs who make the decisions. And if you don't serve them, I mean, that's literally all Roger Goodell does, by the way. And he mostly serves people like Jerry Jones, um, John Mara, who owns the Giants, uh, Robert Kraft as well, because they are the most lucrative. And, um, and but, but at the, but so more, some owners have more clout than others. And that's why you can see like why Roger Sterling uh, Roger Sterling, sorry, Adams, uh, Donald, <laughs> Donald Sterling, in the instance of Donald Sterling, I've been watching too much Mad Men. When, when Silver came in, you know, he was only on the job for something like 90 days. He was fresh new commissioner when he uh, basically forced Sterling to sell the team, the Clippers. But that was for that, there was a smoking gun. There was audio of him saying these insanely racist comments that were over the top and we don't need to relitigate that right now here it's reports it's people talking and yes he received the maximum penalty of 10 million dollars but like in a league that is trying to position itself as the most forward thinking of that big four 
just having a one year suspension and this kind of fine, it really does highlight a contrast between, say, how players are treated and how owners are treated. And this is what that reporter had to say to, to Silver. I think everybody in this room would agree that if any of us had said or done even a small percentage of the things that Robert Sarver has been shown to have said and done, we would be fired. And I assume that anybody working at Olympic Tower, if they had done even a percentage of that, would be fired. And anybody who worked for any of your 30 teams would easily be fired. Why would there be a different standard? And I, understanding the complications of removing an owner, why should there be a different standard for the owner of an NBA team than there would be for everybody who works in this league? Fair question. I, I don't want to say you, you alluded to it, Howard, that there are particular rights here of someone who owns an NBA team as, to some, as opposed to somebody who is an employee. I, I, what? The equivalent of a $10 million fine and a one-year suspension. I don't know how to measure that against a job, but I have certain authority by virtue of this organization. And that's what I exercised. Um, I don't have the right to take away his team. I don't want to rest on that neat legal point because, of course, there could be a process okay, to take you... away someone's team. Oh, well, sorry. He keeps going here. Actually, let him, let him keep going. Team in this league. It's very involved. And I ultimately made the decision that it didn't rise to that level. But to me, the consequences are severe here on Mr. Sarver. Reputationally, it's hard to even make those comparisons to somebody who commits an inappropriate act in the workplace in somewhat of an anonymous fashion versus what is a, a huge public issue now ar around this person. So the, there's no neat answer here. I mean, it's other, other than owning property, the rights that come with, with, with owning an NBA team, um, you know, how that's set up within our constitution, um, what it would take to Remove that team, you know, from his control is a very involved process, and it's different than holding a job. It just is when 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 you actually um, own a, a team. It's a, it's it's just a very different proposition. Well, Second that row, right is, time. I mean, that could be a metaphor for uh, capitalism more more broadly, right? Like, uh, there's a difference between workers and ownership. Um, there's a difference between capitalists and, and and workers, and that's true, right? And in, in terms of, like, he's a lawyer and he's being clear about the way that the structure of the NBA as a professional league is 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 set up. And, all, and the other big sports, it's a very similar structure. Does that make that right? No. And then he kind of tells on himself there when he says, you know, could I, what, could I have forced him to sell the team? Uh, but no, I made that determination that I didn't need to, like kind of contradicting himself, saying that he was he would be unable to force him to sell the team. But at the same time, I made a determination that that wasn't the case because we know that he can and why he was able to get Donald Sterling to sell the team as opposed to Sarver in this instance is because the owners at the time were behind that one but they're not behind this. The thing about this is that they think, like, Sterling was <laughs> such a kind of gross figure and not part of the, from my uh, reading, boys club of the NBA owners, that they were okay with getting rid of that kind of guy, right? But Sar, and his conduct was so over the top and so disgusting in how he spoke about the players that he employs that they were okay with him being the sacrificial lamb. But other billionaire owners who see something like oh, sexual misconduct in the workplace, saying something racially insensitive, saying a racial slur, I might have done some of that stuff. I might have done some of that stuff. So I can't set a precedent that owners can be forced to sell their teams because of that conduct because I probably did it myself. First they came for the perverts and I said nothing. For and then they came <laughs> And then they came for, for the racist. For the perverts and the racist. And then they came Which for was me. me. <laughs> and um, now I have nothing. And about. by perverts and racists we mean billionaire perverts and racists. So that's the thing, right? Um he could do it if he wanted to. But you act but the reality of the position of commissioner is that you are the 
water carrier for the uh, billionaire owners in the league. And it's the same across all of these sports. Um, But in particular, I think the NBA and the NFL, given their current prominence in our culture and in the money that they make compared to right now uh, the MLB, but particularly the NHL. Like, <laughs> We'll do some NHL coverage on the show, but I mean, come on. Uh, they are by far the, the ugly stepchild of that bunch. Um, you know, I, I'm glad that the maximum fine was uh, given uh, to Robert Sarver, but at the same time, you have players like Chris Paul saying who plays for him. This guy writes his checks saying that the punishment is insufficient because why would you want to work for a known racist? And because the NBA is primarily the place that you want to go. If you're a star player like Chris Paul, they are, they, they, they employ you. You have no other place to go. And he holds his contract, right? The contractual rights of, I guess, Chris Paul could walk away and not play and void his contract. But, you know, that, that that's let's just put up Chris Paul's uh, tweet on the screen here. Like many others, I reviewed the report. I was and am horrified and disappointed by what I read. This conduct, especially towards women, is unacceptable and must never be repeated. And then he says something uh, again in replying to himself, which I think is even stronger. And I really commend him for, for doing this. Um, I know... He's a pest on the basketball court, but I, I kind of like Chris Paul, the guy. Okay, I gotta gotta be real about it. Um, I am of the view that the sanctions fell short in truly addressing what we can agree was atrocious behavior. My heart goes out to all the people that were affected. So, yep. I mean, that's it. Um, appreciate the statement by CP3, but uh, I feel for some of the other players in the Suns organization who maybe feel that they don't have the veteran clout or the financial clout to say something.